Hello, this is Sean from Sailing Vessel Breeze. Uh, my, one of my dreams was to have rat lines on my boat. And I did a lot of looking up on the internet. I could not find a lot of resources of just how to do it. So I'm gonna go through a description of how to get rat lines up on your boat. Uh, it's gonna be long, we're just gonna do it all in one take because I'm almost done putting up the rat lines now. So you won't see all the steps, but I'll at least show you how it all goes together. So let's start with the materials. What we use in this case, this is just two by two. This is, these are just fencing posts, right? Just poles, very cheap. We use these pressure treated pieces of wood. Now we cut them at an angle which matches the angle of these baby stays, right? These go up in kind of like an A shape up the mast. And this is the most common place for you to put a rat line. So in order to determine for your boat, because it's going to be different depending on the style of rigging you have, you're going to want to go and make a measurement of what that angle is. So just judge it by the horizon and then the angle of this cable in relation to the horizon and then use that as your guide of how to cut these guys. And the ends of these, that was the trickiest part, I had to make a jig with my friend Tim and we used the drill press in order to get this. So we drilled holes that were about halfway of the end of here and then used a belt sander to round this out to make sure that this isn't gonna run the risk of catching any lines while aloft. And then I uh, originally drilled holes that were too small. These are a lot bigger. This is like a half inch hole. And then I took a kind of countersink bit and countersunk it so there's not a sharp edge, so there's no risk for the rope that's gonna attach onto here to chafe through. So once you've got these, which actually takes a significant amount of time, unless you have a workshop somewhere, uh, we don't live on the boat, so it's just been bits and pieces of putting them together. So we've been carrying these around for like six months. So once you're ready to go ahead and put them up, you want to use line which is uh, black and hard, right? So this is the stuff that we're using. This is courtesy of my friend Tim. You can get this on Amazon. This is one pound twine. Um, you know, each spool's a thousand feet. It's breaking strength, 160 pounds, which is plenty. And we're gonna be wrapping this around so many times that the breaking strength of this is less relevant than um, the wood and also how you do your knot. Now, I did a few trial and errors up here. I started at the top and that's pretty important because you don't want it to, to bow in as you go. And it's also really important to keep consistent spacing. So what I did all the way at the top is I did my experimenting because if you're going to screw any of these up, you might as well screw up the ones all the way at the top because nobody's going to see them. So those are less important. And then work your way down. And the ones on the top are going to be in, done in just the same way I'm going to show you as the ones down here, except you're going to be hanging from uh, a bosun chair, which is how I did all the ones that are up there. So uh, you want to make sure that you're not affecting these by pushing in on them in order to hold on with your bosun chair because you're going to affect how they seat because you don't want these stays to end up bowing in right so you don't want to be the what you're putting up to affect the structural integrity of these stays right because the, the designer of this boat wanted them to be in a very specific angle you want to keep them that way uh, but it is nice to be able to go aloft quickly and make your boat look like a pirate ship okay now these holes, this is how the lines are gonna go through. It so happens that these that I used, I did them in five inch increments. So each one is five inches larger than the next. And for this rig, it ended up that they are spaced 18 and a half inches apart. And that's where I make this line and that's what dictates where I tie them up. Now to start off, I'm gonna take my, uh, my twine, and I found that two meters, or about six feet, is a good length to start. And it's easier just to cut it right out of the gate so you're not working with a big spool of line. Now to start your lash, and this is essentially lashing, be 
Again, by lining this up where you want it to be, line it up with the line that ha you've marked on your 1x19 cable here. And then I start this off with a clove hitch and I leave a nice long tail at the end. All right, there's our clove hitch. And when you're aloft, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this line, this is the working end, is coming towards you. And then this way, when you thread it through this hole, you're going in instead of trying to go towards you, which is more difficult. Now what I found is that it's just as easy just to run it through here. And I do one above. And when I wrapped it around, I give it one wrap around the cable. And then I go ahead and do all the ones at the bottom. And it doesn't take very long. And as you go, you hold it tight, right? And I try to overlap them so they go above. You pull it super duper duper tight. And here I pull down so that it overlaps on the bottom here of the, of the wood. And then give it a wrap around. Keeping super tight and when I'm going and I'm threading it through, if I hold my thumb here, then it keeps the tension on. And then I can take the end, feed it in. This is why you want that hole to be pretty big so that you can feed it easily. Pull real tight, keeping it real, real tight. The key is to keep it as tight as possible. And then in between each one, you do a wrap around the cable. Secure it, put your thumb on there. So now we're on two on the bottom. doing four on the top, four on the bottom. Has a nice look to it and I think it gives plenty of strength to what you're trying to do. Now to prepare these pieces of wood, we did what I described to the ends. In addition, we gave them a sanding first with an 80 grit. I've done my four down the bottom and now I'm ready to do my top and I find it easier to finish at the top because we left this long because we're going to tie it off here so that it's nice and clean with the finish. So same deal at the top and the bottom, give it a wrap, keeping it nice and tight. So now I've got two, I've got two more to go. And if you keep them all going the same way, you end up with a nice clean look, which is good, and it's particularly important for the ones that are on deck because you'll be staring at those a bit more. The ones aloft can be a bit messier. Okay, so now I'm ready. I've got my four wraps on the top. Now I'm gonna give it a final wrap up here. this off with a clove hitch. Now, clove hitch, I mean, look it up, it's, it's pretty common knot. If you have a boat, you really should know how to do it anyway. I'm not going to bother showing you now, but... Um, uh, where are we? The point is, it's like an X, and then you go underneath it. Or, okay, so once you've got your clove hitch, which is a good knot to kind of finish off on, with a square knot just to clean it up and to, to join the end and the end and the end. So right over left, left over right. It's pretty much two half hitches. Left and then left over right. Now this is a hitch so therefore it's not a true knot. And I'm going to do a stopper knot in each one of these because I definitely don't want this to come out. And a stopper knot is just pretty much an overhand and you're going to take it and you're going to try to get it as close as you can to the, the square 
square knot that you did here just to kind of clean that up and if you can keep all your knots tucked into this little, this little divot here then it's going to keep the look nice and clean and it's also not going to be on the outside less likely to get chafed less likely to wear through catch on anything so once that's there so you can see i've got my uh, two half hitches and then i finish it off with some stopper knots I can take it and I can trim it. I've been trimming it maybe half inch or so. With these really crappy scissors. And once I've got that just for good measure, I'll take it, get it away from everything else, and give it a little burn, and then push it down in there so that we have just melted, melted rope right up against that stopper knot less likely for it to come undone. So that's your that's your clean finish. Your rat line. And rinse and repeat as many times as you need to to go aloft.